All right, my little tubers, we're back for some more grafting here on Arena. Good news, we get Shadows over Innistrad in, as of this recording, eh, maybe four days, five days from now. So soon we will have a new set to tease us. Although they will be old cards, it will be a new draft format, so that'll be nice. Anyways, thanks for watching. Hit that like and subscribe. And as always, don't forget to check out cardkingdom.com slash Numot for all of your Magic card-related needs. Link down below. We have opened an Urabrask's Forge, and yeah, card is a little bit too strong not to, not to take here. Uh, again, this is best of three, all will be one. No alchemy, no best of one. This is quote-unquote real magic at its finest. And uh, not much to say about Urbrask Forge, it's just way, way too strong. If you can play it on turn three, it will generally win the game on its own. Um, and even when drawn later, it can still be pretty good. Sack, Evangelist, a couple of other playables. Easy Forge, pick one, pack one. Let's hope we can get some other good cards to go along with it. Although this is not a second pack that has a solid follow-up to the Forge. At least not in red. I'm not going to second pick Hazardous Blast. I'm not going to second pick Oxida Finisher. What are the best cards in this pack? There are a lot of... Wow, there are a lot of poison um, synergies in this pack, aren't there? Toxic, 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 Insta Poison, Toxic, Toxic, Proliferate, Proliferate. I mean, the strongest card in the pack might be the Void uh, Wing Hybrid, but that is just a super awkward card to take. I think Indoctrination Attendant is the second best card here, and it also just goes well into any deck. Although I've been drafting a lot of white, a lot of red, a lot of green lately, I'm going to go ahead and second pick this Void Wing, and maybe we can wi uh, wheel one of these blue cards. Let's try something a little bit different. Okay, yeah, we got enough. You choices here that kind of go along with the Void Wing. I mean, I should be trying to lean into her to the Forge, but... Let's try to do something different, maybe. Um, I think Mesmerizing Dose here makes a lot of sense, right? It's solid enough removal, it proliferates, so it's good with Hybrid. It might be the best card in the pack. I like Scamp if I wanted to try to stay red, too, but yeah, let's do this instead. See if maybe we can go a little bit of blue-black as we get a th fourth pick Annihilating Glare. I think that makes sense. Passing quite a few of these Experimental Auguries, which would also be really, really good if they came back. Yeah, Glare first, probably. Duelist, Augury, all good as well. This is a decent start. Whispers of the Dross versus Gataxian Raptor. Raptor's another really, really good one. My favorite blue common. I think the best blue common. And although Whispers is solid, so is Inquiry. I think Raptor's a better choice here. This also keeps us in line to like a red-blue deck, although red-blue has not been particularly good for me. Well, Furnace Punisher is tempting, but I'm going to take the Serum Stare. Also passing a Dark Slick Shores, notably. If we went blue-black, that wouldn't be bad, but... Let's try to stick with the blue-black. I don't know. This is the color pairing that is the most uh, hated, the, 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 the most disliked, I guess I should say. Ooh, wow, as we're getting a very late seventh pick retrofitter here. Also a Hive Master, which I bet you the Hive Master is probably better... Standalone in our deck, but Retrofitter has higher upside if it works out. But yeah, Blue Black, I think, has uh, some of the worst win rates of any of the color pairings, and I think a lot of people just pass it up now. Very late Flensing Raptor 8th pick. We'll just take the Viva Surgeon's Insight, though. If it comes together, though, it's nice. Like, if Blue Black is open, then you can draft a very good deck. And yeah, we're getting like a wheeled Hive Master here, so that's a great sign. Excuse me, a great sign. Like, I would say this is a very good blue-black start, right? I feel like a lot of the sideboard cards are going to be pretty important for blue-black. Um, Removal-wise, we want to get... Oh, that's a nice augury on the wheel. 
Actually, all the red cards in this pack wheel. This was the pack that had the uh, just the blast and the finisher, right? I think Vat Emergence is actually pretty strong, too. I think people forget that this can hit any graveyard and not just your graveyard. But Augury is like the perfect blue card here for us. Chrome Prowler versus Anatomist. Let's take the 2-5 that uh, proliferates over the cat that just has some random synergy. Another Augury is really good. I would like the Skull Bomb here for the Retrofitter, but Augury is perfect in the blue-black deck. Ooh, last pick, Dark Slick Shores. We did it. And we're opening an insane pack, too, with Glissa, Rebel Salvo, Armored Scrap Gorger, Yowza. All right, well... Especially since it looks like we're leaning towards a bit of black anyways, I, I think we just have to take the Glissa. The nice thing about this one is a lot of rares, um, if you're splashing them, or rather a lot of rares, you want to have them on curve, right? But for Glissa, it doesn't need to be on turn three to be good. It's always going to be a good play. Like something with for like Forge here, I would be less tempted to splash the Forge because if you draw it on like turn seven, it's really not going to do all that much. Although with as much proliferate as we have, maybe it'd still be fine. But let's take the Glissa now. We'll keep our eyes out for a little bit of fixing as we're getting an Ovica now. Holy smokes. Okay, well, I you know what? I'm kind of tempted to maybe take the Ovica and... Stick into red blue after all. I'm losing out on an anoint with affliction here, but I don't actually have that much poison. So it would just be a good cheap removal spell, but Ovica is more akin to a bomb. We're getting kind of messy up in here. Oh man, a disruption. Paladin. Paladin returns Glissa. Prologue to Phyresis. That's a way to give an insta poison. No fixing here. I think I'll just take the Paladin. Curiosity. We've seen a couple of Golems go around now. Head Cleaver. Alright, we have to figure out what I'm doing here. Because <laughs> if I do end up playing red, then the Gliss is going to be a cut. So it's either blue-black splashing Glissa or like blue-red. I guess in any case... In that scenario, I'm ending up playing blue, so let's just keep continue to take the good blue cards, I guess. There's an expanse for fixing here. <laughs> the red, the red green copper line gorge for the double off color fixing. Yeah, let's take the expanse. I hate running expanses, you guys know that, but it does look like it might be the place to be here. All right, we're getting a batter fist now. Yeah, maybe the black is more of a cut then. This is midway, midway through pack two. So red gives me Batterfist, Forge, Ovica. Black gives me Glare, Glissa, Hybrid. We've seen a lot of prologues go around too. Hmm. There's a Prism now if we want. Prism's also good because the Retrofitter wants some cheap artifacts, so that makes a lot of sense, actually, to take. Another Terramorphic. I don't really, I don't really want to be running Terramorphics, though. Could run a counter. Could take the Phyrexian Atlas. Where are you going with this, Kenji? I'm just going to take the Terramorphic. Mm, I guess we'll take the free from flesh over second insight in case we do end up playing red. Another stinging hive master. They really want me to take a hazardous blast too, don't they? I don't think it would be good in our red blue deck, but I guess I'll pick one up. Rebuke's okay. We could be blue black splashing red green. Get a little bit frisky here. Splash for, well, see again, I don't know if I'd want to splash for the forge. Like splashing Ovica would be fine. Grimnark's actually pretty good top end. 
Okay, we have a Skitterfang, a Slash, a Whisper, a Fall. I probably want to take the Slash here as the best card. I don't know. The, the more cards we take, the further away from Glissa it would appear I am going to be. <laughs> All right. I guess we'll just lock in the uh, the red blue then, huh? Double Ovica. Very interesting. Um, do we have enough ways to stabilize in the early game? We have some. But this is going to be at minimum a 17 land deck. Like, I hate passing an engraver here. Oh man, we're getting an Urubrask now too? We're getting passed. Uh, I mean, this is not as good as Shouldred, and 5 mana 4-4 four four is actually not that crazy good in the format, but the ability is super strong. Okay. So, for those of you keeping track, we have two Ovica, Urubrasks now, and an Urubrasks Forge. I bet you we die a lot of the time before we can get the Ovicas online. Like, Hazardous Blast actually looks really bad in the main deck here. Because we're not trying to be super aggro. We're not going to need that card. In fact, what I want are just like a bunch of 1 and 2 drops just to block early. Man, Blade Hold War Whip here. Like, do, am I supposed to take the Slinger now instead of Mesmerizing Dose? The Dose is removal, but it's not that impressive. But yeah, I guess I take it over the Slinger, which Slinger probably ends up wheeling anyways. My creature count is currently six with the Batter Fist. Would be one extra. Okay. Okay, okay. We're getting some options here at least. Scamp is a good early blocker. Raptor's great. Batter Fist is good. We've seen a ton of Chrome Prowlers go around too, but I haven't particularly wanted them. Although right now the Retrofitter looks really bad. In fact, I might want to take the batter fist here to increase the power of our retrofitter because that would give us two batter fists and a prism i think that's okay we would only need like one more cheap artifact serum core chimera we would only need like one more cheap artifact to make the retrofitter worth running i think uh those are not them demolition is okay in the main but I almost wonder with two 7-drops, if running the Atlas is actually correct, and it's also an artifact for the Retrofitter. I could actually see that being okay, because we want to get to 7. Blue Skull Bomb here is good. I don't see us running any of these. Sideboard uh, Ascent could actually be okay. Another Rebuke, no. Another Anatomist is like a maybe... 4 mana, 2-5 is like an okay blocker to buy time. Random 2-drop, but it is an artifact, so I guess that would fit for retrofitter purposes. And that gives us 5 now. Artifacts that come down early, we can probably just cut one of the anatomist. Weird draft. Okay, one of the chrome prowlers also coming back is decent. I'm guessing I'm supposed to cut the Atlas, even with the two 7-drops. Last pick, Scamp, doesn't make the deck. Hmm. So I'll go like 10-7 in favor of blue here. I guess we can still go 9-8 and that shouldn't be a problem. We want red on turn 2. I don't think I'm going to run any of the Terramorphics. Is this a good deck? I don't actually know. It has a lot of good red-blue bombs. But I'm not sure it's a good deck, if that makes sense. Should be fun, though. If we can just survive until the late game. Our deck does have a lot of potential, so let's go to round one here of this all will be one drafto with our red blue bombies.
It's slow, but it's good enough. It's got both colors, a couple of ways to interact. Probably going to draw Forge on turn three because I'm a champion. Okay. Yeah, maybe that's our game plan every time. Just draw turn three uh, Urobrasks Forge. We have a curve. Three drop, four drop, five drop, seven. I'm probably going to run out the Chrome Prowler end of turn here just as a creature. Oh, no! Speaking of... Well, that's miserable. Oh, Forge and Vat of Rebirth is also really cool. Okay. Yeah, so we are just going to try to curve out. There was a turn 3 Forge, it was just for the wrong person. I'm blocking here. If they want to use like Crescendo or whatever, so be it. That means they're not playing out to the board, and that's fewer tricks for the Urbrask then, that's fine. Well, that's not fine because they got to proliferate their Forge, but... I mean, what are you going to do? Alright, that Volt Charge, they could kill the Prowler and then hit me for 5 with Forge. They are missing their 4th land drop this turn to do that though. But I'm guessing... Well, that's really good if they're just going to play out some random blocker because we have the Rebuke for that. Oh god, if they have Annihilating Glare here, we're in such bad shape. Oh, oh they're going for damage pressure, okay. Interesting. Nice. Hex Gold Slash hit. Okay. Perfect. Alright, I mean... Yeah, they hit a 5 drop. They bricked on land again. Feels like we might have gotten a little bit lucky here. That we had a early early or rather turn 5 Urabrask on the play. And they just didn't have anything to go with it. Yeah, they're just dead on board. Phew! Okay, I don't have any artifact destruction, right? No, in fact, I don't have anything good versus an opposing forge. If I had taken that gleeful demolition, we'd at least have one card, but... Oh, I guess I have Serum Snare. Yeah, Serum Snare bouncing the forge is a good way to reset it. So if we draw a snare, we're probably going to want to hold on to it for a little longer, if possible. Okay. I don't think we have much of a sideboard versus them. We don't really need to bring in another 2-5, right? Our game plan of just curving out with random creatures turned out to be effective enough. Yeah, 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 This is the kind of hand that you keep on the draw, and then you cry when you don't draw what you want. Yep. Land off the top immediately pretty bad. Okay, let's go with Prism here instead of Augury in case we draw our Retrofitter. Hope they don't have a forge turn three here. Oh, they're gonna be the one to curve out. Nice. Yeah, so they're just playing that and trying to beat me down quickly. So I guess look for hex gold slash. That will do.
Okay. Mesmerizing dose off the top would be the nuts. We have two of them. Now... How did they see the block? I don't know. Yeah, Titan's gonna be a hard one to race. I'm gonna go to 10 here. If they don't play another creature this turn, I can probably afford to run out the Insight and try to dig for a Mesmerizing Dose. That would also proliferate our Forge by one. Okay, that is kind of scary. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna go with the Insight here and try to find a Dose. There we go. I'm at two on the board, though, so... All they need to find is two extra points of damage, and given that they use the free from flesh like that, I have to assume I'm pretty close to dead. Oh, okay, maybe not. So, we're doing this pre-combat because it proliferates our forge. Uh, that's 10 of our lands, sure. It is what it is. I kept a 5 land hand after all, and... Half of our draws, or half of our cards end up being land. Uh, it actually doesn't look like the 2-5 is all that bad versus everything but their 6-6. Six, six. I'm not sure why they have Skitterling in their deck, though. We haven't really seen any poison from them. We'll be on the play this time, so I think just going, running it back is good. We just took too many hits from the 6-6 six, because six we didn't have anything to jump in front of the way. Even chumping once would have been good enough. Man, these hands... This is a keep, I guess. I mean, we have an artifact and a retrofitter. All right, come on. Batter fist off the top, and we are probably looking insane. Turn two, batter fist. Turn three, retrofitter attack for six. <laughs> ah... Why, 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 why? I guess it's probably good that they're playing out their Shrapnel Slinger. They're just curving out on us these last two games, though. Sure. I'm tapping the Skull Dweller because I don't want them to Atlas us. This is a little bit greedy because I expect they're going to have one of their Volt Charges here. And I'm going to take three, but more importantly, I'm going to go up to two Poison. So if we get to three Poison, the Atlas actually becomes super annoying. Like, I almost wonder if they attack with Skull Dweller, do I just trade with the Retrofitter, especially given our hand? Oh, well, if they're doing this, I kind of want to force them to... No, actually, no, I'm okay blocking the Skull Dweller. They'll probably still use their trick that they were going to use on the Slinger, but this way I don't take any poison damage. Yep. That's fine. I'd rather take one additional damage than take an additional poison, if that makes sense. Sure. Yeah, and you know what? With only one card left in their hand, I'm actually feeling pretty comfortable.
That's really annoying, man. Curiosity would have been so good with that Chimera there. Sheesh. What? I have to expect them to have... Well, if it's Volt Charge, that's really good for us. But if it's another Pump Effect, that kind of sucks. But I'm going to block like this. Yeah, that's fine. This is actually best case scenario. Because I don't get poisoned out, and they only have a 1-4 left. Yeah, next turn, Ovika. I might scream if they have like a random Vraska's uh, ball. Okay. That is annoying, but it's not the worst now that it's drawn on turn 6 or whatever it is. I'm going to go to 12. I'm going to play out our Ovaka. It doesn't take too many non-creature spells after Ovaka to win, and also it's just a 6-6 six, six flyer. It's a good one. Okay. If we get to untap with Ovakai, I assume we're going to be in amazing shape. They have a free attack, but I'm going to make the block. The only card that gets me is like the death touch trick. Alright, let's draw like Vivisurgeons or something too would be amazing. I am not going to play out Raptor first. We don't need the proliferate on the Raptor, but if we do draw like Vivisurgeons, then it's going to give us a bunch of extra 1-1s. One and Batterfist is actually pretty freaking good too. And we have lethal next turn in the air. Perfect. Ooh, okay. Scary. Scary, 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 but we managed to pull it off. Go, go, Ovaka. Yeah, if you can resolve it, it's amazing. We're on the board with a win. 1-0. On to our second match. Yep. If you're on the play and you've got a turn three forge, you're not going to mulligan that hand. Even if it's six lands and a forge, I probably still keep that hand. But this one's even nicer because it apl applies some pressure, a little bit of tempo tap down, and then has an evasive creature as well. So, Obviously drawing a two drop for... 2, 3, 4 curve would be ideal, but turn 3, Forge. It's going to win a lot of games. I wonder what the rate of turn 3, Forge winning is. It's got to be pretty high. Whatever it is. Ooh, that's awkward. So we might go with Chrome Prowler on turn um, 4 instead. And that way we would be able to retrofit the Chrome Prowler. Because we don't want to animate the Forge. That's a little bit risky. Although with Mesmerizing Dose drawn now, I guess the Chimera next turn also has a lot of value. Because then the Proliferate would put two counters on the Chimera. And an additional on the Forge. Mirror match of colors. But one player has a forge and was on the play. Naked retrofitter. I like it. Mm. 
naked as in they didn't get to animate something into a 4-4. Four -four. Touche. It's a great draw. We could animate that, but I don't think we want to. I think we're just going to dose and then blow up the Retrofitter, or at least activate the Chimera's ability. Yeah, that seems fine. Now, indeed, we might animate our Spell Bomb next turn, given the uh, sequence of cards we hit after that. They have to be extremely low percentage to win this game. No matter what they do, next turn is... Like, we, they might just be dead next turn, right? Five, six... Can this bounce artifacts? No, just creatures. Okay, that technically does save them. Oh, this taps artifacts though, right? No. Uh, well, let's take another proliferator then. They can animate the Strider, so no reason to attack with the Skull Bomb, and they're still taking infinite damage here. Pretty easy game one for us, but we were on the draw with a really solid hand. So, mirror match. Mm. Free from flesh as a nice safety trick could be okay. I feel like cutting escape to experiment versus them. Could see bringing a scent as well is a decent trick. I kind of like the flesh instead. Because in blue-red, you're going to have two types of removal, right? You're going to have the tap-down that blue gives, or you're going to have the burn that red gives. I mean, obviously you could have bounce, but that's not true removal, so... Maybe it's better to bring in the Ascent, since it pumps the toughness by three. Obviously, that's going to be a mulligan here. Okay, well, they're not very fast, so I guess we can keep this. Probably gonna have to cycle off this skull bomb, would be my guess. Okay. Could have a turn three forge. Nope. Looks like we're just gonna play our own raptor out then. Both players on mono blue currently. Aggro Prowler to hit me for a couple points of damage seems fine. This seems weird, but I think locking down the Synthesizer makes sense. Because that eventually is going to turn into a unblockable creature, and I want to make sure I use my mana efficiently this turn. Our Raptor blocks either of their creatures here, no problem, too. This 
especially since we have slash in hand i don't think doing anything to the uh i don't think doing anything to the uh prowler makes sense we're gonna kill our own raptor here in response so they don't get to proliferate That keeps a counter off of their raptor. Wow, that was a really important turn, and we bricked. Now we're probably going to end up falling a little bit too far behind. Unless they have a bunch of red cards in their hand that they can't cast, this is looking kind of bad. Okay. Sure. Ah, uh, that'll do her. All right, GG's. Hmm. Yeah, that was just a game where both players got color screwed, but they were able to do more stuff than us, I guess. <laughs> Alright, game three of our second match. Alright, once again, like I said, if you're on the play and you have a turn three forge, you're generally not going to mulligan that hand away. Obviously, a couple more spells here would be good, but uh, there's that Prowler again as well. This is going to be our same curve as game one, basically. And yeah, you want to just get the Forge online ASAP. Especially since we know they have a counter. It's fine. I guess we're going to go Chrome Prowler into... Retrofitter? I don't really care if they counter this. I didn't think they'd be attacking with Synthesizer. Actually, they probably would have attacked with synth synth uh, Synthesizer. This was a mistake. I could have probably eaten their 1-3. Oh, sure. Sure, 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 sure. It's actually a really aggressive start. Hmm. I could very easily lose this game. They have a lot of damage available. Oh, they forgot to attack with their 1-1 flyer. All right. Plus one life at least. Yikes. Well, that's a good sign that they don't have... Um, a counter in their hand. Because if they did, I think they would have waited. All right, that's fine. So double three drop is pretty tempting here, but I think what I'm going to do instead is probably just build a retrofitter. And that gets rid of multiple problematic threats. Plus now, if they don't play out a couple more creatures, it's a little bit awkward for them to try to crew the strider. All right, good. I'm 
Man, they're still on mono blue. I wonder if red is just like a really minor splash in their deck. Because if you look at it, they, uh, they've been able to run out the majority of their spells. Ooh, I'm going to take eight this turn. Yikes. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. We could very easily be dead here. Sheesh. I don't think Ovika's the right play. It's too easy to lose if I do that. I think we're going to go Raptor plus Anatomist. And that forces them to have two removal spells. Like, if they have two Mesmerizing Dose, they kill us. It beats. So what we can do next turn, is, assuming we live, is Retrofitter Animate the Forge. Okay, that's a really good sign. They have only a couple mana to work with now. Retrofitter, animate the forge, and then attack with a bunch of creatures. It's so crazy that the forge creature tramples. Oh, there's the red. Okay, so they can make the experiment a 4-4, but that's not good enough. Right, just three. Does Spellbomb win here? Spellbomb bounce retrofitter leaves them with a 2 1 and a 5 5. Yeah, that should be lethal. Nice. Woof. They did pretty well for being stuck on mono blue for so long, but Forge got us there in the end. Alright, nice little 2 1 start here with the blue red. Bomb.com over here. One more match. Let's try and get that coveted 3 Alright, match number three. Turn one slash, turn two batter fist. We have more blue source in the deck than anything else. Yeah, it's not great, but it's a keep. Oh, come on. Island off the top, and we actually have the dream curve of turn 2 Batterfist, turn 3 Retrofitter. Okay, we can slash that. Damn. Uh, I will offer the trade here. Oh, did not expect that. Okay. We will find other targets for slash versus blue-red. Uh, blue-green, rather. Like, if we can kill a Tyranax for one mana or something, that would be clutch. Or they just have another one of those, I guess. Yeah, we'll go ahead and kill it now. Island! Perfect. You just have to ask for it, you see? That feels pretty good, not gonna lie. Here comes Tyranax. I'm ready for it. That is not a Tyranax, that is a Nyssa. Okay. Well, there's only one way I can play this, and that is sadly to send everything at it, and they get to eat the retrofitter. Oh, and this is so freaking crazy good, dude. They're still left with a 4-4. Four, four. They have three of those things? I mean, there's a reason we're playing against a blue-green deck in the 2-0 uh, pool. 
Yeah, that's gonna be right to still get the forge online. Kitty cat? Oh, serum snare my chimera, sure. So, playing the forge does mean they are probably going to get aggressive, because they really don't have a choice, I feel like. Good news is they're kind of split on damage, regular versus poison. Wow, okay. That was really good for them. Got combat. I'm going to play out the Raptor because it can trade with their 4-4. Four, four. Alright, so Immobilizer goes to 5. Very easy trade if they attack. Combat. Right. Now I'd say we'd probably have this game on a pretty firm lock. There was at a couple turn window when I didn't have much on the board and they had the 4-4 and the immobilizer and whatnot, but... The longer this goes, the worse they're at. I am very happy to make a double block here. So I could also choose to block with the Chimera and a random creature, and that way I would only lose one creature. But I think preserving our flyer makes sense. That's really good. Trading is A plus for us. Oh, that's pretty nice. Might be a little bit too late. Because they have to tap down my Chimera, and then I Chrome Prowler their Synthesizer, and they lose. So, go to combat. They have to tap the Flyer. We tap their Synthesizer, and then they take lethal. Good. Okay, scary blue-green deck. With three Tainted Observers, I think we actually want the uh, Aspirant's Ascent here, because that gives flying. So we can, like, ambush something for a single blue mana. Looks like a 2-1 is pretty bad versus them. And we're off. Have resolved Forge quite a bit. Have not resolved Ovica nearly as much, although that's... Not to be surprising when one is three mana and one is seven, I suppose. Insta sack the skull bomb. I like that. I don't like drawing too many more lands, although we have those two seven drops in our deck somewhere. Sure. Yeah, I mean, why not trade? Ugh. 
No more lands, please. Oh, they're still on mono blue. Jeez. Yeah, they have a really good blue-green deck. Lots of proliferate, lots of the most solid cards. We have drawn nothing but lands. And I guess their hand must be miserable because they gave it up. Holy crap, if they could see my hand, I don't know if they would have conceded. I mean, we did have Urabrask, but given what we saw of their deck, that was a little bit early. All right, we'll take it. Finally, we get another nice blue-red deck. We have had a couple of good blue-red decks, but this one finally pulled off the 3-0. and Forge, Urabrask, double Ovica. The one game we did cast the Ovica, it was great. But yeah, Forge was obviously an all-star. All right, fun stuff. Like I mentioned uh, at the start of the video, Shadows Over Innistrad Remastered will be coming up soon. But until then, I'll have just some more best of three drafts ahead of us. So as always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you back next time. Bye-bye. Also, give me my gems.